Billionaire bootlicker and humanoid egg Michael Smirconish of CNN recently did a segment where he basically just clutched his pearls because he was incredibly shocked and appalled at the response that Michael Bloomberg got when he announced that he'd be uh, entering the Democratic Party primary in an attempt to buy the nomination. Um, so what you're going to see is uh, billionaire apologia. This is incredibly pathetic and cringeworthy. Nonetheless, we will watch and then discuss when we come back. I'm Michael Smirkanish in New York City today and wondering why all the hostility toward Michael Bloomberg? The former mayor of New York City formally entered the presidential race this week he was greeted with a torrent of nasty headlines. Take a look at these. No other Democratic candidate was so coldly welcomed into the race. Bloomberg got no honeymoon. Think about it. When Elizabeth Warren announced that the initial coverage speak to her, quote, baggage, did the first round of stories about Bernie Sanders address the, quote, huge barriers he'd confront? Anybody ever use the word groan regarding Kamala Harris? Anyone ever say disqualify soon after Amy Klobuchar announced? No way. It's been a total double standard, with much of the animus directed at Bloomberg's wealth. Instead of focusing on the fact that he's the son of a middle-class accountant who earned his money himself and that by not accepting donations, he did not prostitute himself to the political process, his self-financing is cast as a negative and his uniquely American story largely ignored. Well, I have a different perspective. I say, welcome, Mr. Mayor. And thank you for your willingness to enter what TR described as the arena. You've been in this race just a week and already your face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. You don't need this. You could spend the rest of your years with your feet up in Bermuda. Hell, you could buy Bermuda, but you choose to continue to contribute, both with your donations and with your talents. Your ethics seem above reproach. You're a data-driven, non-ideologue. And by most accounts, New York City benefited from your leadership of 12 years. So I say good luck. You can have my salt shaker and my sugary drink. Just make the trains run on time. I mean, you could have stopped about a minute in. At that point, you know, Michael Bloomberg's boot was already thoroughly clean. You licked it so clean. It was spotless. In fact, it was so shiny. It was blinding, Michael. That is in, uh, incredibly cringeworthy. And I'm just realizing now that there's a lot of Michaels going on. The host is Michael Smirkanish. Uh, he's talking about Michael Bloomberg and I'm Michael talking about both of them. This is getting very meta and a little bit weird, but nonetheless, I'm not like those two Michaels who uh, one is a bootlicker and one is an oligarch. Um, they are pieces of human filth and watching that made me really feel as if there's no hope because people tune into CNN as a source of news and news is supposed to basically make people more informed going into the voting booth. But can anyone say that after watching that they learned more and they're more informed making their decision in 2020? Of course not. If anything, I feel dumber having watched that pathetic segment. But nonetheless, he says, why all the hostility toward Michael Bloomberg? Because he's a billionaire who's literally trying to buy the nomination. Do you not support democracy? Because that is bad for democracy. I mean, the fact that he has to have this explained to him shows that he needs to be fired from his job at CNN. If you don't know why a billionaire trying to buy his way to the nomination is bad for democracy, then you shouldn't be a political analyst. On top of that, he says, no other Democratic candidate was so coldly welcomed into the race because he's a billionaire trying to buy the nomination. That's a bad thing if you believe in democracy, numbnuts. I mean, I, I just don't understand how you come to this conclusion if you get paid to do politics for a living. He has a net worth of $2 million, nowhere near Michael Bloomberg, who's uh, worth, what, 50 plus billion? But I mean, if you don't understand why a billionaire in politics is problematic, and if you don't grasp why people don't like that and are speaking out about that, then you shouldn't be doing politics. You need to quit your job or be fired and do something else because you're too stupid to understand basic political concepts. Billionaire buying elections is bad for democracy. It's antithetical to democracy. He says there's been a total double standard with much of the animus directed at Bloomberg's wealth because he is a fucking billionaire trying to buy the election.
Quote, instead of focusing on the fact that he's the son of a middle-class accountant who earned his money himself and by not accepting donations, he did not prostitute himself to the political process. His self-financing is cast as a negative and his uniquely American story largely ignored. Yes, because there's so many stories, you know, about the American dream, how we grew up from, you know, a middle-class family and then went on to be uh, worth more than $50 billion dollars. It's so common. It's a uniquely American story. You know, it, it probably is a uniquely American story, but that isn't a good thing for America. That's a bad thing. The fact that somebody can amass that much wealth should embarrass every single American. And he said that Mike Bloomberg earned a billion dollars. You don't earn a billion dollars. Nobody can work hard enough to earn a billion dollars, even if they were able to live to be 100,000 years old. You can't earn that much money. It's impossible. It's impossible. So the way that you accumulate that much money is by exploiting the labor of your workers or taking advantage of a rigged economy, you know, uh, skirting your tax obligations and whatnot. So this is just, I mean, I, I can't believe that I have to explain this to a political analyst who gets paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions per year. You can't earn a billion and buying elections is very bad. Um, he also says, I say welcome, Mr. Mayor. And thank you. Lick that boot. Lick that boot. Kiss that ass. I mean, how pathetic are you? How pathetic are you? This is why you have a job at CNN. Because you are willing to suck up to power. Part of the problem with this segment is it assumes that Mike Bloomberg is running for altruistic reasons. Out of some duty, you know, to his country or social responsibility. And he says this explicitly. Look, you don't need this. You could spend the rest of your years in Bermuda. Hell, you could buy Bermuda. But you chose to contribute. Contribute what? Running for president by trying to buy your way to the nomination is not some sort of altruistic public service, you fucking idiot. And it's not like when he was a mayor, he even made a difference. This is the guy who is known for banning big gulps. He instituted the racist stop and frisk policy that obviously disproportionately targeted black and brown people. It turned New York City into a mini police state. And on top of that, he endorsed George W. Bush in 2004. He tried to criminalize homelessness, yes, by banning food donations to the homeless because, quote, outlawed our food donations to homeless shelters because the city can't assess their salt, fat, and fiber content that's the person who you're standing for. He told people in New York City, you can't feed the homeless because we don't know what's in the food that you're giving to homeless people and it could be unhealthy for them. I mean, this is not a serious person. And all of the hatred and vitriol that's being spewed at Michael Bloomberg, it's still not enough. If we quadrupled it, it still wouldn't be enough because there should be such a backlash to any billionaire running for president that they feel ashamed of themselves and they don't even want to go out in public because they know that they will be shamed by people who realize that buying elections, using your position you know, of immense wealth to try to buy power is grotesque and shouldn't happen in an egalitarian society. I mean, if you truly believe in democracy, Michael Smirkanish, then aren't you at all worried that a normal working class American can't run for president, but someone who is a billionaire like Michael Bloomberg can run and just automatically be taken seriously by propagandists such as yourself? Like, you can't care about democracy if you truly support Mike Bloomberg. You can't. So, I mean, I don't, I don't really need to go on. I think that this segment speaks for itself. He has his job because he's such a bootlicker and an ass kisser of the elite class because he probably thinks that he will be a billionaire someday or maybe he just is a sycophant. I don't know. Either way, this was absolutely disgusting. It was pathetic. And most of all, it was dangerous. We should not be welcoming billionaires into the race. We should be shaming them and telling them to get out of politics because they have so much money that they don't need government to help them and address their concerns, right? They can do that themselves. Government is supposed to be about ordinary people making policies that affect them, not elites telling us what they think we should do. And in the case of Michael Bloomberg, it's not drink uh, sugary drinks like Big Gulps or whatever the fuck. Like, what an idiotic policy proposal. Fuck off. Like, this was absolutely embarrassing. 
And I really hope that Michael Smirkanish feels ashamed of himself for running this segment, but I take it he probably is really proud that he's saying what needed to be said or speaking truth to power, you know, something, some way that he, I guess, justifies it because you have to justify it and rationalize it in order to come to that idiotic of a conclusion to sleep at night. Because if I were doing that and I knew what I was doing, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. So I'm sure that he has to do some type of mental gymnastics and make it seem like he's a truth teller, but in actuality, he's a bootlicker. And that's all he's ever going to be. He, you know, I didn't really have an opinion of Michael Smirkanish, but certainly he has forever lost whatever respect I had by doing this segment. Pathetic, cringeworthy, and embarrassing. Shame on you, Michael Smirkanish. Beta male.